Hey guys and welcome back and today I want to talk about BTRFS. It's the file system we're seeing arriving more and more on different NAS platforms. Originally when it comes to NAS, Synology were the first ones there to get ahead of everyone else and it has to be said that although we've seen BTRFS arrive on NASs such as Acer Store and TerraMaster NAS in the last year or so, it's worth highlighting that Synology kind of got there first and nearly everything I'm talking about today applies to them. And although most of these key features are readily available on TerraMaster and Acer Store platforms, not all of them are. So what the hell is BTRFS? Well, most NAS devices up until recently arrived with the same file system, EXT4. It's instead of, you know, it's always been around. It's, you know, it's quite an old style file system, but it does the job. But with modern changes in the way we interact with our data, and particularly in terms of storage, BTRFS has now become quite a cool little thing. Namely, because of one key feature about it, the fact that it creates two copies of all metadata. And... When it does that, all the metadata that's created typically around any data, and a lot of this can do to be a lot to do with indexing and file structure and stuff like that, these are basically a pile of checksums that denote the files and folders within a preset area. And more and more than when we let allow multiple users to read, write, access our, our data, as well as things like shared folders and whole volumes of data being cloned all over the place, this metadata becomes incredibly important. And the idea that BTRFS is based around this idea of dual metadata creation opens up a myriad of advantages. First and foremost, file self-healing. Now, what's great about this is every time there's a read operation of data between um, and particularly during a read-write operation, the result is that these two copies of metadata are compared. And if the newer version of the metadata is differing to the old one, it then copies the old one. It heals itself. And most of the time, you'll never know that the data, you know, um, anomalies that compile up over time have been healed. It just happens without getting your notification and thereby saving you a lot of time, saving you a lot of data and saving you a lot of money, if, particularly if you're a business user. Now, on top of that, because of the way the structure of BTRFS is laid, and particularly with that metadata shifting there, things like snapshots are considerably easier. With that data creation and two pull points with which you compare all that data, snapshot generation and the actual size that is consumed by snapshots you know uh, over time is lessened both in terms of system resources and storage impact now what that means in the real terms is that every time you create a snapshot that is kind of an image of your data such as it is for retrieval later and i'll get into a bit more detail in a sec every time you commit a snapshot of the data, what happens is you create, create a legacy of snapshots over time from a storage area, but normally a volume. And then what happens is, after so many snapshots later, if you suddenly realize here there's a problem, you can then revert back to an older snapshot. Now it's worth bearing in mind, you still need to keep all the files in between. So if you do a snapshot a day, every day for a year, that would be 365 snapshots. But if it turns out for the last 180 days, there has been an anomaly that you want to revert back to, you have to make sure you've kept all of those 180 days in between so you can revert to that old snapshot. Now, over time, a snapshot isn't going to be as big as the whole system volume because it is just a snapshot, but they do add up and different NAS devices let you have a different maximum limit of snapshots based on storage and power and potential. BTRFS, because it lessens the storage impact and lessens the um, resource impact, both uh, again, that CPU and memory and overall storage, it means you can have more snapshots. And because you've got that file self-healing too, you're going to have less instances of requiring those snapshots and also a larger degree of snapshots to go through. Now, I did mention that a number of NAS brands have now adopted BTRFS as a file system choice. That is true. But there is one feature that almost none of them have that Synology does, and that's uh, BTRF's integration with Synology Drive. Synology Drive is their own kind of um, top-tier file um, integration, one-portal access point 
that also has a great synchronization client with PC and Mac systems. And because of its inclusion of things like uh, file on demand and file streaming, uh, thanks to their uh, collaboration with Microsoft and their Windows platform and Office 365, I believe, because of that and snapshots together, you end up with a much better and more rounded solution with regards to versioning. That is, uh, the number of different copies of files and folders over time that are maintained. And that's why BTRFS on Synology is still as good as it gets. Now, alongside other features and functionality, such as smarter and faster um, uh, shared folder recreation, with uh, a shared folder and all of its settings and values being recreated almost instantaneously uh, compared with EXT4, it should be said that it isn't always rosy. BTIFS is still a relatively new file system compared to EXT4. And if you've got a particularly top-end NAS, a number of you will venture about a file system known as ZFS, which in my opinion is greater than both EXT4 and BTIFS, but that's another video. But if you are buying a Synology NAS for the first time, I would definitely recommend checking out BTIFS as the file system of choice. I believe it's even the default these days from Synology, along with TerraMaster and Acer Store. Do check those out. But this has been What is BTRFS and NAS? I hope you found this helpful. There should be an article in the description that will take you to NAS Compares. So there's a lot more information about this and a few practical applications too. But if you've enjoyed this, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.